All right, everybody, welcome back. Let's have some coffee and a chat. So you join me in the beautiful Norfolk um, with uh, grayish looking skies. Um, where, and you can clearly see I am on one of my camping trips. I came with some friends and they have left because they had to go away early and I wanted to stay an extra day just so that I can go do some birding and also to um, make this video for you guys. So in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about my beautiful i4 you can see behind me there. And just let you know, just give you a bit of an update on where we are efficiency wise and that's because, well, some weird things have been happening. Well, not so weird, they're expected, but um, I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about that. Now, if you've been, you use my phone for my notes. If you've been following my channel um, over the last few years, you'll know that I've had this car since 2022. So it's three years of ownership with it. And after three years, I've driven 41 and a half thousand miles and I'm about to put some more on it as I go back home. About 150 is what's coming up there. Um, I probably should interject here and, um, you know, thank our sponsors of this video, which are all the lovely birds you can hear. So they're going to compete with me <laughs> for the sound, but I love that. This is why I come out in the great outdoors because I love all of this noise in the morning. You hear all kinds of things, but more importantly, if you manage to hear a little knocking, that will probably be the resident woodpeckers um, in the area. You'll see me looking around every now and again and not looking at you because I'm still absorbing the beautiful scenery of all the birds, you know, as they, um, as they do their thing. Anyway, let's get back to the car. So we just came out of a really tough winter. January in particular was rubbish. Well, it, in my calculation, it works out to 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. But I don't think I was getting that because what I've noticed is my range has come down quite a bit. And during those months, I found it really tough because, you know, I've had a couple of winters with the car before. Maybe it's excitement. Maybe I was really enjoying it too much to notice anything. But this last winter was horrible. Um, also, add to the fact that I'm doing a lot of short drives. I'm taking my son to and from school. And like any car, petrol, diesel, electric included, they don't like a lot of short, go, stop, go, stop, that kind of thing. So I'm doing a school run in the morning and in the afternoon. And in the morning, it's most inefficient because that's when it's really cold. These days in the afternoon, we're getting some nice temperatures. So what I have noticed is that I was getting around a 200 mile mark on a full charge over the winter. Bearing in mind when I got this car brand new, I have actually already seen in some of my earlier videos, 320 miles on a full charge in the height of summer. Let's be clear, that was in summer, okay? About 250 in winter, but I'm getting about 200 now. And that begs the question, is my battery capacity still the same? I don't know, but we'll come to that in a little bit. So as you can see now, I've come on a, on a camping trip. I've got a roof box on there. If you're thinking about um, obviously doing things like that with your i4, yes, it'll take a roof box. We've got some fixing points. And that was an interesting um, discovery, um, getting the foot pack and everything to, foot, to fit the roof box on the car. I went to Halfords at first and I said, okay, I need a foot pack to fix my roof box onto the car. Already had the bars because obviously um, I had other cars before where I used to put the roof box on my last three series. It was a Touring and it had um, the flush roof bars on it. So I got the foot pack for those and everything. And I had, I had all what I needed except the foot pack. So I went and I got the foot pack. I got home now, two days before I come on the camping trip foot pack cost me about 125 pounds and as I was about to fit the foot pack on I realized all the instructions is telling me that I'm missing something else something called a kit what a name anyway so I had to go source this kit Alfords didn't have it got it at Trident Town another 50 pounds so 175 pounds in and I was able to fit that unit on top of the car so the way that works is the kit goes on, it screws into the fixing points 
and then you put the fruit pack on top of that then you put the bar on top of that it is it is 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 a bit of a kit <laughs> let's put it that way but um i wanted to check to see what my efficiency will be driving with that um it's spring now temperatures during the day are around 15 to 17 degrees i left london with about that and um i was then driving here i cut my trip into two parts i did a first 50 mile to stop at some services and then the 95 miles the rest of the way to get here and the car was averaging 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour it's averaging around 34.4 um watt hours per 100 miles so you have to do some calculation 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour that's what it gave me um which is about right except for the fact that I still feel like I'm not getting enough mileage from it. So that is what makes me think that my, while the efficiency might still be good and the computer is telling me one thing and when I do my calculations, it's actually telling me that the computer is right. The actual distance I can travel in total is reduced. So I want to have that looked at. And for this one, I want to do a little bit of a collaboration with um, Richard Simons. He runs a YouTube channel called RSEV. So Richard, if you're watching this, I want to catch up with you, bring the car down so that we can run some tests on it. It'll be good content for your channel as well. Um, he normally does um, mainly Teslas and things like that. He does have some other cars. Um, but he mainly does Teslas. So I wanna just make sure I go and have a look at that, do a quick little check through with him and see what he makes of all of that. Um, I am going to be packing down camp today to head back yonder and back down to Kent. So I'll also keep an eye and see if there's any changes in my um, efficiency on the way home. Here's the final thing I'm gonna say though. I'm between two minds. This car, um, I want to keep it. So I'm coming to the end of my PCP in another year. So I've got another year before I need to worry about doing all that. And the balloon payment is about 20 grand, so 24,000 pounds, I think somewhere around there. So my choices are keep the car, pay the 24 grand, or sell the car on somebody who want to get into a BMW i4 um, and then just buy a new car because obviously battery technology have already improved this car is already obsolete doesn't matter what anyone says it's already behind the curve okay this is a 2022 car so the battery that's obsolete so the technology is improving batteries are getting lighter they're more dense and they can give you a lot more um, distance uh, you know on a charge and stuff like that i'm keeping my eye on what bmw is doing because i would like another bmw i like bmws this is my fifth one so i want to you know stick with the brand because i really love the brand it's not that i want to look at any other options out there but i really like this brand um, and because their customer service is second to nobody else this is not about brand identity and so on i am a firm believer in customer service i just happened to have a bmw uh, many years ago after having had an audi i had an audi a4 and then when i got into trouble with that car and needed things fixed the customer service was shocking so i got rid of it and i bought my first bmw it was an old knocked up five series and when I went to my BMW dealer to give it its first service and all that sort of stuff, the way I was treated, it was, if, it was as if I was their loyal customer for many years. And, you know, this is, I always buy a new car from them. They even called me by my first name, offered me a coffee, put me in a taxi to go home or have a driver take me home while they fix my car and then come back and pick me up, you know? And since then, I've always been buying BMWs because that service for me and a couple of times in other cars when I got stuck at the side of the motorway and stuff like that, one call to them, they will show up with a tow truck, pick up your car, take it away, give you a car to use while they sort your car out. And then when they finish, 
they only charge you for the work they've done on your car. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are other brands out there that are doing that. So if you know them, drop them in the comments. But that's why I stick with BMW. It just, it just works for me, you know. So I want to get another one. And um, the price of these cars, um, I'm going to check on Auto Trader and put it up on the screen. But I know that the value of cars at the minute, particularly electric cars, are not that great. But I want to see what's going to happen on Auto Trader and a few other places, see what the price of this car is. Anyway, at the risk of me waffling any further, I'm going to finish up my coffee, enjoy my camping, the rest of my camping trip, head home today. And um, if there's anything else I need to tell you, I'll let you guys know. All right, guys, I'm finally home after three hours of straight driving. So let's have a look at the numbers. So here the car is telling me that I've done 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. I've done 168 miles, just a bit more than 150. Right now it's showing me 30% battery and 70 miles to go. Bearing in mind that that is with the roof box on top. But let's have a look and see. Uh, let's crunch some numbers. Let's grab my calculator here and crunch some numbers and see basically what is it that we're actually getting. So let's see if, if we agree with that. It's used 70% of the battery. So 70% of the capacity of the battery, which is 82 kilowatt hours is 57.4 um, kilowatt hours that's been used. So the car used 57.4 kilowatt hour to do 168 miles. So I'm going to do, was that 168? So 168.6 divided by 57.4. And that, according to my calculations, have confirmed 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour not what's shown there. However, bit of a caveat about that. 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour, um, for me anyway, with a roof box on top on a 12 degree day, 12 to 15 degree day, it's not bad at all. It's okay. I'd expect that that number should have been higher if um, I didn't have the roof box. But also, it's also confirming to me anyway that the, there is a dip in the battery capacity. So I really do need to go and get that looked at because it's just confirming to me that after three years, the car isn't going as far as it will normally go on one charge, which is OK because you expect that the battery will degrade. That's a thing you'll expect that. I just want to know by how much it's degraded, um, you know, after three years and especially since I genuinely just charge on ac pretty much most all of the time so we'll see but anyway thanks for watching the video up to this point uh, it's really good to have you guys on board and just following me um, on my stuff that I, I do with the car and all the all the things that i enjoy with it um i'll see you guys when i think of something else to film <laughs> peace out so on a completely different day <laughs> uh two days later with much higher temperatures and no roof box on the top the car is back to winning ways like things i'm accustomed seeing so let me show you what i'm accustomed seeing so this is going to be the last part of the video i promise uh let me show you what i'm accustomed seeing and and why i'm happy today so obviously we're back to what looks like summertime temperatures but this is um it's still spring 16 degrees today but when i left home it was like 21 so let's have a look and see what it looks like so here we are you can see well i i, I had it on 85 percent battery i have just driven about 10 miles no 16 miles you can see it there 17 miles we can call that i've just driven about 17 miles and it's only used five percent of the battery because i had it on 85 percent charge I left home with it saying it's going to do 200 miles dead. And I got here 17 miles later and it's gone up to 213. So you can pretty much tell that my, um, my efficiency is a little bit better. So here we are, 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour, um, driven, for, driven for 17 um, miles. And that's basically it. It's not bad at all, is it? And on the motorway, I was seeing higher than that. 
I was actually seeing 4.5, 4.9 miles per kilowatt hour on the motorway. So happy days. It's all looking good. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. So we're going to live it up for the summer and then cry at winter. <laughs> anyway, peace out, guys.